Hey everyone, welcome to day eight of the Lena March Challenge. I am a little behind due to a busy week. I haven't had the opportunity as yet to watch everybody else's videos, but I'm certainly looking forward to doing so and learning by them. But I thought perhaps it might be best to record mine first before I find myself inadvertently repeating what everybody else said, especially as we start the journey. We're going back to basics and I love that because I really want to almost start afresh, start again with the Lenormand um, system. So I'm far more comfortable with it than I was before. So when we start with card number one, the rider, he is known by many as the messenger. He's also known as the horseman, but his job is, he's the courier guy, isn't he? He's the, he's the person that delivers the message or the answer. So it's about the arrival of information, news, but not so much if he's delivering a letter as an example, it's not so much about the letter itself because we have a letter card, but it's the process of delivery. It's coming soon. The horse is galloping on most cards. You'll see the artwork and you just get that sense that well, horses are very strong, so there's strength involved, there's power. Um, you get the impression that the horse is fit. So when I look at this card, I also immediately, as an astrologer, think of um, Mercury Gemini and um, Jupiter Sagittarius. So if you think of um, Gemini as an example, he rules communication and writing and documents and learning and teaching and Sagittarius rules expansion and travel as in long distance which is a little bit like the ship I know but Sagittarius is a centaur half man half horse and he needs to run he needs to exercise he needs to be on the move otherwise he can get quite frustrated and bored and feel really closed in so it's for that reason that I think about those signs. And of course, they are on the polarity. They are opposite each other. So they relate to each other in the zodiac. Other than that, yes, a visitor, um, movement ahead. Uh, and as I say, something new, it could be symbolic of a new opportunity, something opening up. But really, it's that sense for me of something outside of myself coming to me that will be delivered to me. So then we move on to number two, the clover. I always think of Hex Claire. Isn't it interesting when you, your mind just goes back to the very first experience and it, it were her videos that I came across three years ago when I first discovered uh, the Lenormand system and I always remember her saying, because she's so cute, saying, you know, it's a little luck. It's, a, it's small luck. It's not a big ginormous lottery win. Um, so Clover is something good some good fortune. Uh, perhaps you might even say it's an opportunity of some sort, but it certainly has that flavor of being um, pleasant and wonderful, and it might put a smile on your face and a spring in your step. And other than luck and opportunity, um, I'm trying to be creative here, because that's really what I see it. It's, you know, it's something good. It's good luck. So it's going to say, um, in a sense, if you're doing a spread, I imagine, if you have a few heavy cards and, and then you see the, the clover coming after it, it's going to lighten the load. You know, it's, it's, it might be, say, a little shift in the energy of these situations that have been um, holding you down. So it gives an opportunity to start feeling, as I said, happy again and seeing the light in the situation rather than being blocked by the mountain or whatever it happens to be. So it's like... It brings hope and happiness, good fortune, and a blessing. So, a blessing or two. I think I shall pause and continue on from here. Won't be one moment. I almost forgot. Um, Kelly asked us to share a situation in our lives that more or less depict this situation with the rider and the clover. And what comes to mind for me immediately is a situation that occurred very recently with a deck of tarot cards. And I ordered these cards, A, obviously because I wanted them, but also I noticed that they were going out of print again. So, you know, when cards, when certain decks 
are a little bit older. Sometimes it takes years before they will do another print run, if at all. And so I was getting quite concerned because it had been a month and they didn't turn up. So I wrote to the publisher and said, look, yes, it's a no-show. Um, can you give me any further information about the tracking? And they were wonderful and said, no, 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 we'll send you another deck. And I was very grateful for that. Would you believe another month went past and I thought, oh, this is just getting crazy. Like, are they delivering it to the right address? So I went to the post office and I'm cutting a long story short and gave them the tracking number and they said, well, that parcel's actually been delivered. Someone signed for it. What? What do you mean by that? So I had to go on yet another adventure and... It turns out that I gave them the wrong tracking number when I asked for the tracking number. I received a tracking number, but it was for another deck. And so it was one huge kerfuffle. And the long and the short of it is the cards had not arrived yet. And I see this rider and Clover is when the post office got back to me and said, oh, no, 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 we see um, we've looked into, you know, the tracking of this particular deck now that we have the correct number and it has not arrived yet and it turns out that there was a mail dispute in the US and so my first parcel went missing and I read that many parcels did go missing. That's pretty freaky for people that may have ordered a one-off and my second parcel sat on the docks in the US for four weeks. That's why it took so long. So this little combination here is the moment the post office said oh don't worry it's on its way to you Um, you will receive it and I did receive it and I went yay very loudly but I don't think the lady in the post office really shared my joy so much I think she was just quite happy to solve the problem and get me out of there (laughs) because I was really desperate come on you've got to find this parcel so there you go for me that was a big yay for me but possibly not for the staff of my local post office so I shall pause now and um, prepare the next two p.s I was just thinking if the letter is an email in our modern world that means the writer must be hotmail or gmail right I know it's lame Uh, these are the things that keep me awake at night. But anyway, I thought I'd just share that. Hmm, it's really got me thinking now. Okay, time to move on. And to continue, welcome to day nine of the Letter March Challenge. So now we move on to cards three and four. Card three, the ship. Card four, the house. Well, the ship is my favourite card Oh my goodness, because I am such a huge fan of long distance travel. And as soon as I see this card, that is exactly what I think about me doing it. So um, (laughs) there is again a Sagittarian flavor. Sagittarius does represent uh, long trips, not short trips. And obviously you see the sails wide open. They're on the open seas. So it's all about movement, a journey, moving away to a distant land, perhaps a relocation. Um, I think I read somewhere crossing, you know, like it's almost like, you know, when you're crossing the channel sort of thing. So yeah, a crossing or a transfer, which is interesting for this card. Obviously it can depict a vacation. And again, I would say that's an overseas vacation or certainly a vacation to somewhere that's quite a distance from where you live what else can I think well things are moving aren't they they're certainly not still we've left the port and I guess you'd say in a way which is interesting next to the house there's a certain amount of instability or uncertainty because you're dealing with the waves of the ocean there's nothing solid under your feet so um You're still on the move. I guess it's just traveling. I don't know. Something kind of just went in my brain and out the other side. But it's about traveling and movement and, yeah, traveling to somewhere that's foreign or different to where you started out, if you like. Um, Movement, 
transfer. I said that already. So that's kind of in a nutshell the way I see um, the ship. Perhaps if you have a card like the mountain that indicates some kind of blockage and the ship comes along in a reed, it's, you know, indicating to you that um, not to be too concerned because things will begin to move again if they have been stagnant for a while. And there's something also, I think, to do if it's transfer. Now, I read this, but I can never remember where I read it. But it's something to do with inheritance if it's paired with other certain cards. I imagine like the coffin. So it could be a family inheritance. Again, it must come from that, you know, the transfer of money across, something along those lines. But I am inexperienced um, with regards to that as far as doing a spread goes. So again, yes, long distance travel, Sagittarius movement. For me, it's excitement as well. Anything to do with being out there and crossing the seas, whether it be in a ship or a plane, I don't care. Let's just go. <laughs> One of my favorite things to do in life. Now, when we move on to the house, it's quite a different story because it is about solid ground beneath your feet. It's stability. It's about domestic affairs, um, yeah, just home and family. Perhaps it might be a bit of family history, depending on the situation with your read. It might be uh, perhaps classed as your immediate environment. You know, when we come home, come home to the matter. It's about security and maybe to a degree responsibility and ownership because it takes you know a great deal of responsibility to build a house or renovate a house or even maintain or run a house and again i can't help but think of the fourth house in astrology which is home family um, stability emotions i mean you know you've got family members together so maybe an emotional um element could come into it again depending on the type of read that you were doing but I don't want to read too much into it otherwise I'll start being a tarotist but I just when I see home I think home family emotions and there's always a little bit of history that goes into that sort of family arena because you know your family has been together for years type thing and I was thinking also you know that element of behind closed doors you know the like there's a facade that the, the front of the house is beautiful but you don't know what's going on inside with regards to the domestic affairs and I used to be a music programmer and as soon as I thought ah oh, behind closed doors it's like that old Charlie Rich song when we get behind closed doors and she lets her hair hang down and she makes me glad that I'm a man for no one knows what goes on behind closed doors it was an old country song love it anyhow i better leave it at that i better leave it at that before i start singing travel songs so uh, um yes days eight and nine done and i shall be moving on thank you very very much for watching i hope you gained something out of this in one way or another may it be pleasant so talk to you again soon thank hey everyone uh, a quick part b to day nine i did forget to mention uh what it was that came to mind in my life when I see the ship and the house together. Obviously the first combination that comes to mind for me personally is moving overseas or having a house in a foreign land. And I moved to London when I was 24 years old and stayed there for two years. And I absolutely loved it. In fact, I didn't want to return. I had a wonderful job with Citibank in Kensington High Street and they tried to get me a visa and they said, no, nope, you can return to Australia immediately, sadly. But I did my two years and I really loved it. So that's kind of the memory that comes back immediately when I see, um, you know, long distance home. And, you know, it's funny. I actually did record this last night and I just without thinking decided to swap them around. And I thought... Hmm, is that just starting to make things too complicated? So I decided to scrap it, not just for that reason, but um, I also felt that the uh, volume was too low. So perhaps I just was speaking softly because it was late at night. But I noticed um, the one video I have watched this morning is Kelly's and she did swap them around. 
And I thought I would share the one thing that really comes to mind for me with regards to this, or actually there was two, because I thought there are certain combinations for me that I struggle with a little bit as to what the difference is, you know, like ship, house, house, ship. Some of them are really distinctly different and others, like this one here, I feel can be quite similar because I've read, you know, ship, house and house, ship both can mean um, um, emigrating to another country as an example, you know, and you think, well, how come it's the same? Anyhow, I have been watching um, videos on tiny houses. Have you ever come across them? I think they are absolutely amazing. So these are people, um, especially in the US and I think in Europe as well, building these really teeny tiny little homes. And a lot of them are actually on wheels. So they use often shipping containers and they convert them into these modern, fantastic little tiny houses. Some of them aren't on wheels. So I think there's different different styles and some of them are bigger than others some are so tiny i could not personally live in them it's like living in a caravan kind of thing but it's just that the designs that they have they're so innovative and often very very modern it's just fantastic and when i see this i thought of a tiny home because it's a home on the move and the reason they do put wheels on them so they can be moved i think has a lot to do with uh, law and land taxes and like if it's got wheels you can move it and you are allowed to you know temporarily set up house in certain circumstances whereas the others you cannot or you must buy the land or whatever it is but even so they do transport the house the house is transported on a truck and then they set it up and and or the house can be moved time and time again I was also, oh, anyway, check them out because some of them are just incredible. I'm, I, I want to go and work for one of these companies now. I'll paint them. I don't care, but I just think it's so innovative. The other thing that came to mind, I was wondering how other people felt about this. Could this mean because the ship is moving that you lose the house? What if you wanted to buy a house and it goes to auction and you have your heart set on it and you really believe it's going to be yours or even if it's not an auction they offer a price and you think oh my god I can top that and then someone else comes along and goes blam and that house just sails away or even if it's like floods could it be you know a tsunami I don't even want to think about things like that but it has happened where you know can this mean the house is washed away even if it's symbolically speaking um, I was just wondering what you thought about that rather than simply we are moving overseas kind of thing. Yeah. Anyway, I'll leave it at that. Thank you so much. Bye.